Welcome to our podcast. And this week at London Visited, we go to the Millennium Bridge to tell you all about this iconic part of London. My name's Steve, and each week I'll bring to you the facts, history and information about different parts of this great capital. If you've been to London, are planning on visiting, live here or just love London from afar, then this is the podcast for you. Also, don't forget our YouTube channel, London Visited, to see videos covering this place and so many others across London. And now to this week's podcast. The Millennium Bridge, officially known as the London Millennium Footbridge, is a steel suspension bridge for pedestrians crossing the River Thames in London, linking Bankside with the City of London. It is owned and maintained by Bridge House Estates, a charitable trust overseen by the City of London Corporation. Construction began in 1998 and it initially opened in June 2000. London has nicknamed it the Wobbly Bridge after pedestrians experienced an alarming swaying motion on its opening day. The bridge was closed later that day, and after two days of limited access, it was closed again for almost two years so that modifications and repairs could be made to keep the bridge stable and stop the swaying motion. It reopened in February 2002. The bridge is located between Southwark Bridge and Blackfriars Railway Bridge. Its southern end is near the Globe Theatre, the Bankside Gallery and the Tate Modern, while its northern end is next to the City of London School below St Paul's Cathedral. The bridge's alignment is such that a clear view, a terminating vista of St Paul's south facade is presented from across the river, framed by the bridge supports. The design of the bridge was subject of a competition organised in 1996 by Southwark Council and the RIBA competitions. The winning entry was an innovative blade of light effort from ARP Group, Foster & Partners and Sir Anthony Caro. Due to height restrictions, And to improve the view, the bridge's suspension design had the supporting cables below the deck level, giving a very shallow profile. The bridge has two river piers and is made of three main sections of 81 metres, 144 metres and 108 metres, north to south, with a total structure length of 325 metres. The aluminium deck is 4 metres wide. The eight suspension cables are tensioned to pull with a force of 2,000 tonnes against the piers each set into the bank, enough to support a working load of 5,000 people on the bridge at a time. Ordinarily, bridges across the River Thames require an Act of Parliament. For this bridge, that was avoided by the Port of London Authority granting a licence for the structure and the City of London and London Borough of Southwark granting planning permission. Construction began in late 1998 and the main works were started on April 1999 by Monberg and Thorson and Sir Robert McAlpine. The eventual cost was £18.2 million, £2.2 million over budget, primarily paid for by the Millennium Commission and the London Bridge Trust. The bridge opened on the 10th of June 2000, two months late. Unexpected lateral vibration due to resonant structural response caused the bridge to be closed on the 12th of June for modifications. Attempts had been made to limit the number of people crossing the bridge, which led to long queues but were ineffective to dampen the vibrations. Closure of the bridge, only two days after opening, attracted public criticism as another high-profile British Millennium project that suffered an embarrassing setback, akin to how many saw the London Millennium Dome. Vibration was attributed to an under-research phenomenon, whereby pedestrians crossing a bridge that has a lateral sway have an unconscious tendency to match their footsteps to the sway, exacerbating it. The tendency of a suspension bridge to sway vertically when troops march over it in step was well known, which is why troops are required to break step when crossing such a bridge. An example of this is London's Albert Bridge, which has a sign dating from 1873, warning marching ranks of soldiers to break step while crossing. The bridge's movements were caused by a positive feedback phenomenon, known as synchronous lateral excitation, the natural sway motion of people walking caused small sideways oscillations in the bridge, which in turn caused people on the bridge to sway in step, increasing the amplitude of the bridge oscillations and continually reinforcing the effect. The maximum sway was around 70 millimeters. On the day of opening, the bridge was crossed by 90,000 people, with up to 2,000 on the bridge at a time. Resonant vibrational modes due to vertical loads, such as trains, traffic or pedestrians, and wind loads are well understood in bridge design. In the case of Millennium Bridge, 
because the lateral motion caused pedestrians to directly participate with the bridge, the vibrational modes had not been anticipated by the designers. When the bridge lurches to one side, the pedestrians adjust to keep from falling over, and they all do this at the same time. The effect is similar to soldiers marching in lockstep, but horizontal instead of vertical. The risks of lateral vibration in lightweight bridges are well known. Any bridge with lateral frequency modes of less than 1.3 Hz and significantly low mass could witness the same phenomenon with significant pedestrian loading. The greater the number of people, the greater the amplitude of vibrations. Engineers at Urup, the company that designed the bridge, conducted research into the unexpected oscillation, which they called synchronous lateral excitation. The first laboratory studies used pedestrians on a moving platform at the University of Southampton and Imperial College London. Later, in 2000, one span of the bridge was instrumented and tested with crowds of up to 275 people. They concluded that making the bridge stiffer to move its resonant frequency out of the excitation range was not feasible as it would greatly change its appearance. Instead, the resonance was controlled by retrofitting 37 fluid dampers to dissipate energy. These include 17 chevron dampers, long V-shaped braces under the deck panels to control lateral movement, four vertical to ground dampers to control lateral and vertical movements, and 16 pier dampers to control lateral and torsional movements. Additionally, 52 tuned mass dampers add inertia to control vertical movement. The work took from May 2001 to January 2002 and cost £5 million. After a period of testing, the bridge was reopened on the 22nd of February 2002 and has not been subject to significant vibration since. In spite of the successful cure, the affectionate wobbly bridge, sometimes wibbly wobbly, epithet remains in common usage among Londoners. A short incline lift known as the Millennium Inclinator is next to the northern end of the Millennium Bridge. It was opened in December 2003 to allow pedestrians to surmount the steep slope, 13.6 degrees, of Peters Hill from the riverside to the entrance of the Millennium Bridge without using the alternative flight of stairs. The lower end of the lift is on Paul's Walk next to the Thames, and the top end is 26.85 metres further up Peters Hill on the terrace which is level with the deck of the bridge. It was primarily installed for use by those who cannot easily manage the steep steps, such as people with disabilities and parents with pushchairs. The lift carriage was originally powered by an electric traction motor manufactured in Italy with a speed of 0.5 meters per second and a maximum capacity of 0.7 metric tons. However, by 2010, the City of London Planning and Transportation Committee decided that the level of the service was unacceptable because the inclinator was frequently out of service due to mechanical breakdowns and vandalism. So the committee agreed it would be replaced at a cost of up to £750,000 in time for the 2012 Summer Paralympics. A major renovation project was undertaken in 2012 and the funicular was reopened in time to be used by people attending the Thames Diamond Jubilee pageant of the 3rd of June 2012, which took place about a month before the Summer Olympics. The new lift was manufactured by a company in Germany. The bridge is featured in the Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, where the bridge collapses following an attack by the Death Eaters. It also appears in the 2014 Marvel Cinematic Universal film, Guardians of the Galaxy, during a climatic battle. So, I hope you've enjoyed our look at the Millennium Bridge, what the issues were with it when it first was built, and how it is now. Whatever podcast service you use to listen to this, please do subscribe to get updates on new shows, and also do leave us some feedback. Also, let me know any places you'd like us to feature in future podcasts. And you can let me know through our website, www.londonvisited.co.uk. You can email me directly on londonvisited at gmail.com or you can contact us on Twitter and Instagram on at London Visited or Facebook on at The London Visited. Thanks for listening. Really hope you enjoyed our podcast and we'll see you soon on the next one. Bye.